Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Samsung refrigerator, evaporator, motor, fan blade. It's going to be a very easy repair and it'll only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at ApplianceParsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new evaporator motor fan blade. The evaporator motor fan blade circulates the cold air through the freezer. The manager should be changing it out, so if it's damaged and the cold air is not being circulated and the freezer is not getting down to the temperature you selected. In order to get to the part, we have to open up the freezer door. Once you have the door open, we have to take the drawer out. So we're just going to pull it out in a little bit and you want to make sure that the rails on each side are pushed all the way up like this and then we can lift up on the drawer and pull it out. Now that we have the drawer out, we're going to take the basket out. In order to make it easier to get that out, we're going to open up the refrigerator doors for a second. And then we can lift the basket out. You want to lift the back up first and then slide it towards the back a little bit. Once you have it free, you can lift it out and set it aside. Once we have the basket out, we're going to close the refrigerator doors again. And then we can take the door off the freezer. We can see this bracket that has two bolts that hold the door onto the rails. We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket with a ratchet to take them out. Now that we have these out, we can go to the ones on the other side. Now we can lift the door off the brackets. If it's stuck, you can Use your hand to press down on the rail while you break it free. And then we can carefully lift the door up, pull it off. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the door out of the way, we have to take this connecting rod off. So we're just going to push it all the way over to the right and flex a little bit so it comes out of the left wheel. Once you have it out of that, you can pull it out of the right one and pull it off and set it aside. Once you have the connecting rod out, we can push the rails in, and we can take out the ice maker. To get it out, the first thing we're going to do is remove this cover. It's just snapped on, so just squeeze it a little bit and pop it off. Once you have the cover off, we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out these two screws that hold it up. Once you have the screws out, we're going to reach in and pull forward on the ice maker. It releases from the tabs. We can drop it down and carefully reach in and disconnect the wire harness. There's a locking tab on it. Just have to press it to release it. Once you have it released, you can pull the ice maker out of the freezer. Now that we have the ice maker out, we're going to take the back panel off, tailed in by two screws. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Once you have both screws out, you can reach in and carefully pull the back panel off. To get the back panel off, we're just going to carefully pull out on it. Once you have it worked out, you can drop it down a little bit. Once you have the back panel lowered down, you can see that there's three electrical connections up here on the right hand side that we have to disconnect. There's locking tabs on them, so we're just going to reach up and unlock them and unplug them. Once you have all three of the wire harnesses disconnected, we can pull the back panel out of the freezer. Now we're going to set the assembly on a table with a towel down to protect it. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to remove these four screws that hold the motor assembly on. Once you have all four screws out, we're going to lift the motor assembly up and then we can pull the evaporator motor fan blade off the shaft. Once 
Once you have it off, you can separate the pieces. Here's the old evaporator motor fan blade next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Looks like they don't give you a spring on the new one, so we have to take it off the old one and put it on there. We're just going to use a small needle nose pliers to reach in and pull this off. And then we can swap it over to the new one. Just want to make sure you push it down so it's even with the little shaft. Once you have it in place, you can put it onto the motor. To put the new one on, we're just going to turn over the evaporator motor and line it up and push it down. Just push it down until it bottoms out. Once you have it on there, we can turn the assembly back over and line up the screw holes. And then we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Once you have the screws in, we can put the assembly back into the freezer. To put the assembly in, we're just going to kind of lift it up into place. And then we're going to have to reach behind and grab the three wire harnesses and plug them in. They're all different, so you can't mix them up. Just push them on and make sure you get them in there so you get a good connection. Once you have all three connected, you can, uh, lift the assembly back up, and push it into place. Now if you have to, you can pull this right slide out so the wheel gets out of the way. Once you have the wheel out of the way, you can get the panel up the rest of the way. And then we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws. Now that we have it back in place, we can put the ice maker back in. To put the ice maker assembly back into the freezer, I'm just going to line it up so we can plug the wiring harness in. It can only go on one way. Make sure it snaps on so you get a good connection. Once you have it in place, we're going to lift it up so the fill tube goes up through the opening. You can push it back and lock it onto the mounting legs in the back. Lock it into place. Once you have it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws on the front. Once you have both screws in, we can put the cover back on. Just have to line it up and snap it back into place. Now that we have the ice maker in, we're going to pull the rails out. And then we can put in the bar that goes between the two wheels. Just have to line it up on the right one and push it in and do the same on the left if you have to flex a little bit you can once you have the bar back on we can put the door on to put the door back on you just have to line it up on each rail and set it into place once you have the door in place we can use the ratchet with the 10 millimeter socket to put the bolts back in Now we can do the ones on the other side. Once you have the door back on, we can put the basket in. To put the basket back in, we're going to open up the refrigerator doors to give us a little bit more room. And we're going to take the basket and lower the front down in first. Then you want to swing it and lay it down. You want to make sure that the front locking tabs go in and then you can set the rear ones down. Now that you have the basket in, we can close the doors and then we can put the drawer in. To put the drawer back in, you want to make sure that the slides are in the same position they were when you took them off. And then we can carefully set the drawer in. You want to make sure that the slides go onto the glides. And you can push it all the way back in.
once you have it in, you can close the freezer door, plug it back in, and make sure it starts to cool. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.